Hello, and welcome back to another developer log. If you missed it, I've made two different developer logs that has been months ago since I did anything, and, well, I haven't done all that much since, but a few weeks ago, somebody reached out to me, I'll be keeping them anonymous for now, but they reached out and said, hey, do you want to build a game together? And I, I was a little trepidatious, I was unsure, but I, I decided to step forward and say, yes, I do. And that gave me the motivation to finally, actually, start working on stuff again. And now I have stuff to share again. I'm going to be vague on what the full project is going to eventually become. But there were a couple different things that we wanted to nail down in terms of gameplay elements. The first one that I have you see test O2 moving objects here on the screen. The first thing we wanted to do is we want to have some sort of mini game, uh, a cooking type mini game. And to me, what, what I thought that meant was it's it's fairly simplistic. It's still going to be a visual novel. It's it's still written in RenPy if you can't tell. And what I decided to do is that I just want to be able to do something very basic. I want to have pictures of things that you drag to a spot and then it snaps to the spot, and then once it checks that all the things that you're trying to put together in that spot, it'll be good. And so I, I went on Google, I found some code written somewhere that handled the snapping portion of it. I'm not going to do any stepping through code today, I'll just show off the demos and call it, call it a day. But, and I can't remember where I got that code from, but thank you, whatever Google search, and thank you, person on the internet, for posting it for me. Let's, let's jump into test O2 moving objects. So, it's general. I used this, this one I was just wanted to keep very basic. I wanted to get the programming aspect done to be a very minimal, minimal viable product for what I'm actually trying to build and I tried to reuse as many assets as possible. This was just wanting to show that I can update the backgrounds throughout different things, so the background's gonna change a little bit. This I used in the first video for the first little project I made, just very simple hills, and I wrote, let's slice an apple and serve it. Please slice the apples. And then it pops up the game, I guess. There are four different objects that you can pick up. So there's a knife that I drew, a little apple that I drew, and then just the number one, just the number two. And then this square over here is the drop point, where basically what's happening in the background is that anytime one of these objects are, are moved, there's a function that gets called and it detects if something is in this drop point right here. And if it is, what it does is it makes it snap to the center. That is the piece of code that I borrowed from the internet. I then appended onto that to verify if all the objects I wanted in here were actually there. So in this case, I said, let's slice the apple. So you'd want the knife and the apple. But right now I have the number one and I have the apple and then it says not quite. And I tested this and you could do that with pretty much any combination and it'll keep spitting you out until you have the knife and the apple, in which case, yay, that sliced the apples, and now it says, well, I, I presumably plate the apples. I guess I never wrote that. I left the same objects in the actual application of the game. These would also be bigger. They would be placed on a better background, not of Romiel, everyone's favorite Evangelion angel. It's the same concept, just move the plate to the apples. Hurrah! And this was the end. I just did a little demo there. I just used images I had saved onto my computer from years and years ago. And that's that demo. The second thing we wanted to do was create a bit of a rhythm game at the start. Just start out with a rhythm game and then cut out of it pretty early on for narrative purposes. Programming a rhythm game into RenPy is far above my weight class, but this wonderful person, Lin, or R3D Hummingbird here on GitHub and itch.io, made one for and said it's it's basically open source, free free to use for any project as long as they are properly credited. And I thought, hey, that's exactly what I wanted. It's just for a small part of the game. 
we, we don't need to, anything to do be too big or too great, so I'll just download this and figure out how to implement it into the game. This is roughly what it looks like. You The notes scroll down, and you hit the buttons. I will say, it's not the best. Again, can't don't look gift horses in the mouth. But if I wanted to actually have a rhythm game, it's not great. It doesn't read the button presses perfectly. And also because it was built with a Mac, I actually can't get the note chart software that they used to run on my Windows machine. And so if I wanted to make the notes any differently, I would have to do it manually, and it's by second count. Also, the notes are spread across the chart randomly, which also isn't great. But hey, I'm not judging the software. It's exactly what I wanted. I didn't need it to be great, and I'm just grateful it's there. So I, I played around with it for quite a little bit. This one took a, took a while, but I was able to get this up and running. So I chose a Beat Saber background that I found off of Google. I'm adding to test dialog to make sure it's happening correctly. And so what's going to happen is it's going to play 30 seconds of a song. And then the idea is that the song gets cut short and it moves on into a cutscene afterwards. So here is the rhythm game. I'll play it a little bit. I chose the excellent song off of the 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim soundtrack, which was, which it was a joy to listening to this while I continue to test this demo over and over and over again. Again, you don't really need to be playing the game. If you remember from the screenshot earlier, I did update this quite a bit. There was a tracker at the top showing how much, actually to show right here. I removed the tracker, I removed the quit button. Anyway, the idea is that it would jump to this video and move on with a cutscene while saying the rhythm game is still going on in the background. This is, I think, a .avi video or maybe a... Uh... No, it's not .avi. I tried that. It's a different type of video that I had to convert it with the software. Well, let me, while the video continues to loop, I'm just testing I can still add dialogue to the front of it. And that was that. The biggest problem, which you probably noticed as I was talking over it, is after the rhythm game ends, it takes... It's either that the rhythm game needs to take a little bit to finish itself, or the video takes quite a bit to actually get loaded into memory and start playing. Either way, there's a quite a sizable gap in between the two which I'm not personally that happy with. It's, it, it's just a rough demo, and the next demo will have the same thing. I was thinking eventually maybe it would be quicker if we converted the background to a GIF, or a GIF depending on your pronunciation, and then just play the song in the background instead of... I'm already still just playing the song in the background, but swap out the video for a GIF, maybe that'll load a little bit quicker. Anyway, so I took both of those two demos, and I put it into a skeleton. It's it's sort of like a vertical slice, but it's not really the full polished... It's not what I would think would be a vertical slice, but it does have all the elements that are in the game in a somewhat structured organization, which to me kind of feels like this is a skeleton. And this is basically taking, honestly, the past three demos I worked on and combining them all into one. So there's a little bit of vis visual novel elements, there's the minigame element, and there's the rhythm game element. All stuck here together. You slowly lower the goggles onto your head, nestling them into place. They weigh heavy on your head, dragging your head ever slightly forward. Alright, I, I guess I needed a couple more passes on the dialogue there. But the weight vanishes as soon as they spring to life. You're whisked away by the dazzling worlds of lights, your body, emotion, sense of time, sense of being, all replaced by their virtual counterparts. This is a little character I drew in GIMP. You decide to start with the classic, totally cool rhythm game. Selecting cool song 12, you prepare your body to move along with the beat. And then hey, here's the minigame again, exactly as it was. I'm not gonna play it this time, I don't want to. I also didn't update the video. I didn't want to take another video that was I I didn't set the I just set the background after I figured out how to do the video and I didn't want to record another video and then reconvert it. OGG? 
OGG, I think, and then inject it back into the file. Awkward gap. Also, you might have noticed the dialog box opened up briefly. I for some bug happened that we was staying there the whole time, but luckily I was able to close it manually. But just as you get moving and interruption, bang, 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 muffled yelling. That's definitely the door. Someone banging on the door. The bang continues. Oh crap! Again, once the backgrounds change, this isn't even the main character art. You'd be able to see that better. Finally, remember your friends were coming over today, right now. You fling off the headset and rest it gently on the bed. This is another image I stole from Google, and I just put a blur effect on it. I'm not selling this. Copyright owners don't come at me. Before rushing off to get the door. Rushing to the door. Again, I need a dialogue pass. Rushing to the door, you hear your friends call out your name. What name do they call out? And this is the part that I took from the other demo I did. I defaulted the name to Sam. Still like the name Sam for whatever reason. It's very androgynous in a way that I enjoy. It's not my name, but it's a name. You can of course replace it with whatever you want. For now, I'll just leave it. What's your name, Sam? Does Sam look right? And then, yes, Sam looks right, or you can try again. And what pronouns do they refer to you with? He, him, she, her, they, them. I opted to just do three of them, because when it does eventually come into implementing the dialogue into the game, Choosing three is already going to be a lot of work. You have to replace any line and, and account for any line that uses pronouns and toggle between either he, him, she, her, or they, them. I have that set up as an enumeration in the back end that would check for whichever one of these is being used and replace the proper line in the code. But if I wanted to do it how the actual first demo I wrote did, where the user would be able to input their own pronouns, that's just so much more work and almost it might even be impossible depending on how the pronouns are referred to as for instance he him is he was but they them was they were and i'm not sure however many neo pronouns also differ in that i know like z would be z was and they wouldn't be z were maybe i'm not even too sure either way i just decided i, I put my foot down and i said let's limit it to them three I'm sorry if anyone has other Neo pronouns they wanted to use, but just keeping with them. But this is also integrated into the dialogue, I just tested that out real quickly. Does they them look right? Yes, they them looks right. Another image I stole from Google. Hey Sam, you in there? Yeah, almost. This is the main character, this is the friend. You might notice they have very similar bodies, but the I changed the eyes and the faces. Guys come back, they were just playing a game. And for instance, if I chose he was just playing a game, it would say he was just playing the game. Can I actually do that? Yeah, I can. So let's do, let's see that what it looks like with he, him. He was just playing the game, and it also works for she was just playing the game. Hey Sam, ready to get cooking. Yeah, sure, almost forgot. Let's get to it. And once again, more dev art. I drew a table. I don't like how this looks. It would be different. Maybe I should have just made it the full counter across, but that's that's too late now. Alex pours out the ingredients across the table. I also went with Alex with a Y, like the character from Half-Life, a game I've never played. I don't know why. I just chose a name. Sam and I will handle the slicing. You others get the other stuff. First, let's slice up the apples. And I, I upgraded the demo a little bit. So right now, this cardboard is the drop point, but what it actually is, is there's an invisible drop point floating right here, and then the cardboard is just an image that was placed there. And then the idea is that you would put all the apples on the table, and then I just, again, found an image of an apple off of Google. Oops, I don't know how I messed that up, but I did. That's a bug. Found it live on camera. I did fix a bug, at least I thought I did, where if I took an apple off and then put it back on, it would count as not working. It would count as, it would go to the fail screen as saying not all the elements that were expected to be there. I thought I fixed that. I don't know what swirling it around like I just did there did, but that also broke it apparently. Also, I just started playing The Binding of Isaac again, so this is Mom's Knife from The Binding of Isaac playing a lot of that game in the past few weeks. 
No, the- okay, again? I broke it again? I shouldn't be able to do that. Anyway, yep, just put all the stuff in here. Now, of course, in the future, more steps would be added, but because I just wanted to do a brief overview of all the elements that would be integrated to the full game, I just did the one. Alex says, yata. And now I kind of move into the last element. This element I wasn't, I didn't make a full demo of because in my mind, I already knew exactly what I wanted to do. So you'll have to use your imagination here, but this is where the bulk of the story will be. Plus there will be more cooking minigames too. Then eventually there'll be a decision which will lead the player down a branching path. And there are two paths, choice one or choice two. So I chose choice one. This is choice one, eventually it'll lead to an ending and then jump back to a looping point. Now it's rough because I've j just a rough little demo, but it goes back to the Yata screen. Where then it has, says the same dialogue again. There will eventually be a decision. And now I did want to make sure that both of the branches are going to be selected. Branch one and then branch two. And then once you've done both branches, you'll be able to achieve the true ending. And so I needed to make sure I can account for that. And so this here is proving to myself that you've already done choice one, so I can add code. It's actually just a list, a global list that I kept that I check. Is this element in the list? Then do this. But you've already done choice one, huh? Which is my, the demo's way of implying to do choice two. Eventually to an ending, go back to the looping point. And this is where the game would end. It is no longer looping, this is the true end, even though not much has actually changed, but it skipped over the dialogue choice because it recognized that both choice one and choice two were completed so we can get the true ending. Thanks for coming. Please tip your waiter on the way out. And that's what I did over the past few weeks. It was honestly really good sitting back down and getting my feelers right for developing again. I'm really excited for this game. I'm really glad I was reached out to. I, I cannot wait to continue working on this. I do feel a little bad. I still really like the initial idea I spoke about in the last episode, which in short is to integrate more TTRPG gameplay elements, so die rolls and skill checks, into the general visual novel to just to add a little bit more interaction to it and specking your character into a way that'll get the ending that you want to get. But also, after I finish this project, I don't know if I'm going to want to work with any more Renpai. I kind of get a lot of it at this point. Don't get me wrong, I love Python, but I feel like anything else I would want to build, I would want to do it on a more robust engine, and so the next one of these I do, hopefully I'll have finally kicked myself in the butt to have downloaded Godot or Unreal Engine and start doing something in that, learning that as well. Both of those would also just be better if I ever wanted to get into the game industry, but they're just more robust gaming engines to do more things than just do stuff in a visual novel engine. For instance, the rhythm game is great. It's fantastic they got it to work, but one built in Godot or Unreal would be able to work a lot better because it's working with less constraints that come with RenPy. RenPy is great for visual novels, but I just want to grow a little bit more and do more, do more with that, learn more. But that is going to be it for this developer's log. If you liked it, hey, let me know either by leaving a comment in the comment section, maybe let me know what your thoughts of the demos are and what your favorite video game engines are. Or if you'd also like to let me know you liked it, you can like it or just leave any rating on the video. I won't mind. And you can also subscribe to get notified of everything else I post onto the channel. Or if you'd like to read my thoughts that I post on the internet, you can follow me on my social medias or I'm at Mario 8th everywhere. Links to all of those are in the description. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.